One of the greatest things I learned about positive psychology was really you learn a lot about yourself. And I think that through life's journey, uh, you make a lot of mistakes. And I think you learn from that. And one of the things I've learned through this, is actually, you can, it can be taught. And I, what I've really seen is that I would like to have learned a lot of these skills as a young kid at school so that I can really have used it through my life and then to influence others. Happiness isn't a product of having more good things happen to you, not being better looking, not being wealthier, but in fact it's actually about having a rich repertoire of friends. And for me, clinically, that's information that I will pass on to all my patients forever and ever. I think the most important thing, at least in the UK where this has been very, very big and based on the science, is the recognition that we really need to think about the whole population, so we want everybody to flourish. We don't just want people with problems to get better. Yeah, so in the sports context, I suppose it's taught us that well-being and performance are linked. So in the past, we, we didn't worry about well-being, we just worried about performance and we thought we could yell at players, scream at them, and it didn't matter because we were pushing them all the time. But what we've learned is if we focus on strengths and we look at well-being, we actually perform better. I'm really excited about the developments in measurement that have taken place within positive psychology and moving away from using exclusively self-report measures to starting to introduce a range of different other possible multi-method approaches. Well, I guess positive psychology has given me a, um, a framework from which to uh, better understand myself, to better understand the people around me and to try and work effectively in a team setting. I'm very excited about positive psychology and how we can translate the knowledge of positive psychology through the use of new and emerging technologies. In 2025, I can imagine that every young person um, is thinking about flourishing, is using um, and engaging via the technologies that they care about and that we take that evidence into a space that engages young people.